Hello friends, Pastor Dave here for our daily devotional, Something Deeper. Thanks for joining me on this Friday. I hope you've had a good week. I hope you're looking forward to the weekend and especially getting together with the Lord's people on the Lord's Day to worship the Lord. Uh, That's what we're doing at 10 o'clock at First Brethren Church of Sarasota, and you are welcome to come. Today I want to talk to you about reasons for our faith. I believe you should have those reasons. I don't think any true Christian really has any kind of fondness for the idea of blind faith. It's good to have reasons for your faith. You should have reasons, and you should know what yours are. Let's talk about that today on Something Deeper. Acts 17 tells the story of one of Paul's missionary journeys and one little episode in that journey. It seems that Paul and his friends went to Thessalonica. And in that city, they went to the synagogue, which was their modus operandi. They they would go to the Jews first, and they would go to the synagogue and teach the Jews that, not that they had to convert to Christianity, because Paul was still a Jew, as, as were all of his friends, But the idea was that they were preaching that Jesus Christ was their Messiah. And then often the Jews in the synagogue would reject them, and then they would go to the place where the Gentiles would gather, the marketplace or someplace like that, and then they would tell them about Jesus. But they went to the Jews first. As Jesus said, he came for the people of Israel first. And in this case, Paul went to the synagogue in Thessalonica, And people started to believe. People started to accept that Jesus was their Messiah. And then some of the Jews, probably the leaders, got angry at them and started a riot and got them in trouble with the local magistrate. In Acts 17.10, this is what happened. As soon as it was night, the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue, like they always did. Now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. As a result, many of them believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. So here we see that they did test what Paul was saying. The Berean Jews here, it says they were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica. But notice why they were more noble. They received the message with eagerness, but also they examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. They weren't noble because they just were gullible and believed Paul without any evidence. They were noble because they were willing to search for the truth, and they found out that what Paul was teaching was the truth. And because of that, the Jews believed, and a number of Greek women did, and so did the Greek men. So people from every walk of life in that town started to believe because they were of noble character. You see, what they would do when Paul said Jesus is the Messiah for the Jews is they would examine scriptures because Paul was preaching to the Jews. So they already had the Old Testament, and and they already believed the Old Testament. And so believing that, they examine it to see. And I'm sure they went to Psalm 22 and Isaiah 53 and other passages that were predicting Daniel. Other passages that were predicting about the Messiah and who he was and what his life meant. And because of that, they said, yeah, we see that Jesus fulfills these prophecies. He's got to be the Messiah. And they believed. Now, If somebody didn't believe the Old Testament, they wouldn't go to the Old Testament. But all of us have to have a reason for what we believe. Or we don't really believe it, do we? Maybe we just want to believe it because that's our culture or that's what we're born into. Yes, I'm a Christian because I'm an American. Well, that's not a good enough reason. I'm a Christian because my parents are a Christian. That's not a good reason either. I'm a Christian because they raised me in the church. Not a good reason. We have to have reasons for our our beliefs. For me, one of the main reasons is the historical evidence of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That 
all of the testimony about the resurrection of Jesus was very early. And we also have external evidence outside the Bible that Christianity grew very quickly in that first generation when, as Paul said, there were 500 witnesses, more than 500, that Jesus was alive again after his very public crucifixion. The empty tomb shows the resurrection as well. That's one of my main reasons for believing in what it says. The historical record of the Bible and how archaeology has time and time again corrected those who said that the Bible was wrong. When we found the Hittite Empire, when we found uh, Joshua's um, altar on on the Mount of, of Cursing, um, all, all sorts of different uh, archaeological finds, uh, the Pool of Siloam, um, Hezekiah's Tunnel, all of these show the basic historical accuracy of the Bible. And a lot of times when people used to say, well, this, there's no evidence for this. There's no evidence for the Exodus. Well, they found some evidence when the people of Israel started to come into the Promised Land. Or they'd say there's no evidence that, that David ever existed or that he was a, a powerful king. And yet now we have contemporaneous carvings that have the name of King David on them. Um, so many things that the Bible, that pe- scholars have said, oh, the Bible was wrong about this. And then they find out later, hey, maybe he isn't, maybe it isn't that wrong after all. And they've actually found evidence to support it. That's another reason that I believe. Uh, along with those, the historical accuracy is the prophecies in the Bible that were written before events happened and yet described those events very clearly. We just went through the book of Daniel in our Wednesday Bible study, and there's so many parts there that are just very clear prophecies to the point where some people have said, well, it must have been written after all of it happened because it's too clear. But they're just saying that. There's there's no reason to believe that. And in fact, we have reason to believe that it was before the events happened. Um, I have personal reasons for believing Christ too because of what he's done in my life and the miracles that I've seen. You know, I don't expect that to convince anybody else, but for me that bolsters my faith. And the beauty of the teachings of Christ, the stories of his life and, and how wonderful his example is, somebody who forgives even those who are torturing him, what a contrast with other leaders of, of religious movements. I think about Muhammad and I think about the sexual immorality in his life. And I think about the violence that he perpetrated and the killings that he ordered. And then I compare him to Jesus. And I'll tell you, there, it's night and day. The beauty of Jesus' life and example on one side and his teachings on the other, just so beautiful. And then when you read his teachings, how powerful they are. The the morality is so high that he proposes, but also the fact that we are sinners and still we can have grace. And that he lived up to those standards as well. There's a lot of reasons that I have for believing in Jesus Christ. And I guess one good thing I can ask is, What are yours? And if you want to put some things down in the comments, feel free. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, that we can come to you and have faith in you, and you have given us reasons. Father, we thank you that you have given us the opportunity to come to you out of love and not out of compulsion. We thank you, Father, that you've given us the evidence that we need. I pray, Lord, for everyone here to be able to put true faith in you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. I love you all. Take care. God bless.